Jay Flatley was CEO of Illumina from 1999 to 2016, guiding the company from being a small microarray supplier to the leading provider of DNA sequencing technology around the world. Editor Andrew Hahn spoke with him about pivotal moments during his tenure and their continued reverberations in the genomics market. So which Illumina product made the biggest impact on genomics? I would say it was probably the HiSeq 2000, which was the product that was subsequent to the first Selexa product called the Genome Analyzer that we had acquired. And, and the reason I would say it was that instrument is that that became the, the platform that truly was an extensible architecture that uh, allowed us to build all of the future platforms, even up to today's NovaSeq technology, is based on similar approaches to sequencing um, that really was innovated for the first time in the high seat 2000. Uh, we launched that product in January of 2010, and it was the first um, sequencing product that allowed us to get below the $10,000 genome. And what did the sequencing market look like at that time? Well, you know, we had done pretty well with the initial product that uh, we had launched from uh, Selexa, but it truly, in its embodiment, didn't have the capability to um, to, to really go as far as we, as we thought we wanted to push the technology. And, and so while the, the sequencing market uh, for NGS um, began to grow very quickly in that first year, 2007, uh, we really thought if we got to a better fundamental architecture that we could make the market grow much faster, which is exactly what happened once we got into the high seek product line. And uh, in, in 2007, as an example, we went from effectively zero revenue on the Selexa product to about $100 million in one year. And the only real other player in the, in the next generation sequencing market at that time was 454. And so we rapidly became the market leader in next gen sequencing. ABI was still the, the leader in sequencing overall at that point. So aside from acquiring Selexa, what was the most consequential business decision that you made while CEO of Illumina? Yeah, I think it probably was the settlement of the Affymetrix lawsuit in 2006. Um, and, and the reason I say that is that it, it, it had the single biggest financial impact on the company. It was probably the hardest decision I ever had to make as a CEO. Um, they had sued us on five patents, and uh, each of those patents had many claims. And so the, most of our investors thought that they would win some part of that lawsuit and that we would have to pay them a substantial royalty. And so in the analyst models of our respective businesses, there was a 15 to 20 percent royalty built into our income statement saying we would have to take 15 or 20 percent of our revenue and pay that to Affymetrix. And on the Affymetrix analyst side, they had 15 to 20 percent royalties built into their financials. And so uh, that was a huge risk for us. It had depressed our stock price because of the expectation that that was going to become reality. At the end of the day, we settled for a one-time payment of $90 million. So writing a check for $90 million for patents that we never thought we infringed was a very difficult decision for me to make. But because it was a one-time payment, uh, we, there was no subsequent royalties either direction. And uh, our stock prices... Um, we exchanged market value of about a billion dollars in one day when we announced that that settlement in Illumina's favor. So that was probably the single hardest decision I ever had to make as a CEO. Uh, do you think that that decision allowed you to become a next gen generation sequencing powerhouse? I think it did. It kind of unlocked um, our, uh, our equity in a way that the stock price began to be related to the fundamentals of the business. Before that, we had this burden we were carrying of this very large potential royalty, and, and that just depressed the interest of shareholders in buying into our company. And so that, interestingly, was right at the time we were doing the Selexa transaction. And to Selexa's credit, they were willing to um, complete the transaction with us, even with that lawsuit um, overhanging the combined companies. And so we settled it right at the time that we closed the Selex acquisition in early 2007. Um, and that sort of unlocked our, our stock price and allowed us to do um, better recruiting. It allowed us to, to raise more money at higher prices uh, and, and really got us off to the races in next-gen sequencing as a result. So several people, including you, have become very wealthy thanks to Illumina's rise. And um, you've reinvested those gains into other biotech startups. What are some of the most promising or interesting companies that have been seeded by this group of investors? 
Well, it was interesting. I read a, an article just recently that had done some background research on this, and they said that that 70 companies have been started by Illumina veterans, and, and those companies have raised over $5 billion in capital. Now, that includes um, people who've gone into the venture business as well as operators. Um, but of that, of those 70 companies, somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 or 30 uh, ex woman employees had become CEOs of, of new companies. So certainly there's a diaspora from Illumina that, that seeded this industry in very, very significant ways. Um, selfishly, because I'm chairman of this company, I, I'm very excited about a company called Selenome, which is run by uh, Omid Astadan and founded by Mustafa Renaghi, two veterans uh, of Illumina. Um, you know, Gardent was formed by uh, two, two gentlemen who worked in our research group, and they've been extraordinarily successful. Uh, Element is another great example. Um, providing you know real competition in the next gen sequencing market, uh, and there's many many others, but but those three are standouts to me. Is there something that you think people misunderstand about the DNA sequencing market even today? Well, I, I think there's some sense that maybe the the growth of sequencing is dying out, which which I think is really not the case. I mean, if you take a look at how many genomes have been sequenced, it's it's still a very very small fraction. And there's more applications coming online to repeatedly sequence people for therapy selection or minimum residual disease. And so I think we're still at the very, very early days of, of sequencing. Now, the prices are, have gone down dramatically, which is good, and there's still elasticity uh, built into this market. But I think we're, we're still very, very early in sequencing all the humans that ought to be sequenced. Uh, all the plant and animal kingdom in addition. Um, and, you know, I've always said for many years now that we should be sequencing everybody at birth. And I think we're at the point where that finally may start to happen in some test cases. And, and certainly in the next decade, I think we'll get to that point. 